Statistics, by definition, is the art and science of collecting, analyzing, presenting, and interpreting data. Before we can continue, we need to be very clear what is meant by data. In a study, data are the facts and figures that we will collect and analyze and present and, in the end, interpret. Now, for example, if we were to do a study on students and their demographics, the data would be the information we collect on things like their height, their race, their gender, anything that we might find interesting about these students. Now, once we've collected all of this data and we put it together, that is called a data set. Data is not just numbers, as we've already said, they need to carry some extra information. What we have here at this point doesn't tell us anything, it's just a bunch of numbers. Now we can attach some information to these numbers. Let's say they represent the weights of bars of butter. Then uh, we might be interested in some process control um, system where we want to check uh, whether the manufacturer is over or under supplying customers. So in that case, we can go and do statistics on this data set. Um, we can, for instance, say that the average weight of the butter is uh, 500.1 grams. We can calculate the standard deviation and we can get a pretty good indication of what's going on in this manufacturing process. Before we continue talking about data types, we first need a little bit more terminology. Now in this study, we have different elements, we have variables and we have observations. I'll explain these terms using an example. Let's say we are interested in investigating hobbies of students, specifically on the Mamelodi campus, and we are interested in seeing whether hobbies are different for males and females. Then our elements, in this case, would be the entities in which we are interested in or on who we want to collect the data. And here we can see that these are clearly the students specifically on Mamelodi campus. Now the variables we are interested in uh, would be the hobbies that these students practice and their gender. So we have two variables here. And an observation, by definition, is the set of measurements that we obtain for the elements. Now our elements are students on the campus. It's a general term. The observations would be the measurements that we obtain for the specific students that we've included in our study. Data can be divided into two data types, namely quantitative data or qualitative data. We also refer to qualitative data as categorical data. The big difference between the two is quantitative data has numerical meaning, so we can do some calculations with it, where qualitative data does not have numerical meaning. These are more like concepts um, or categories, like for instance hotel rankings, um, that the uh, performance on a test um, in terms of good, poor, average, anything along those lines. Quantitative data, like we said, has numerical meaning um, and we can do some calculations. These could be test scores or the number of people in a park, anything numerical. Now, apart from having data types, we also have measurement scales. For quantitative data, we have two measurement scales, namely discrete or continuous data. Where qualitative data, we have nominal or ordinal measurement scales. It's very important to remember that our variable defines what type of data we are dealing with. So if we had a variable, time spent watching TV during weekdays and hours, um, then our data would look something like this. We could have five hours, we could have zero hours, we can have something like 2.5 hours as well. Just depends on how we are collecting our data. Now, the level of physical fitness is another possible variable we could have. Here you can see one is a very low level of physical fitness, where four is a very high level of physical fitness. So our data would look something like this. Now, the difference between these two the first one we can see has numerical meaning. Um, we can go do calculations. We can calculate the average number of hours we can uh, spend watching TV. We can calculate the standard deviation. We can calculate the range. There's quite a lot of different calculations we can do. And these calculations lead to answers that make numerical sense. Now, on the second example, we also have numbers, but these numbers are actually just symbols that represent low, very low, high, and very high. So if we do calculations, tempting as though it may be, 
we're not really finding anything that means something. So if we had a average of 2.04, it doesn't actually mean anything. It only, these numbers only represent concepts. So there's no numerical meaning in this case. So in the first variable, we would have a quantitative variable where our second variable here, even though we're representing it with numbers, it is not numerical. Let's consider two more variables, namely the preference for spending time with friends and then you where you would spend most of your leisure time. So the first variable, we are given at a rating, on a rating scale from 1 to 5, where 1 is not at all and 5 is very much. So the responses that we can expect would be something along the lines of a 5 or a 4 or a 3, anything like that. Again, these values are, even though they're numbers, don't have any numerical meaning. They're symbols that represent a concept. So for the second one, our venues where we spend our leisure time would be given in words. There's no reason here to give symbols or numbers in the place of at home or shopping malls or friends. We can just give the words as our responses. Now the difference between these two, if we look at the first one again, like we said, there's a rating system going on here. So there is a objective way of ranking that is happening over here. So one is not at all, five is very much. So there's a rating scale that's happening. So the rank of this data is actually meaningful. Now the second one, we only dealing with categories. So our data is classified into these categories. There's no objective way of ranking these. So that is the difference between nominal and ordinal data. If we can rank our data in a meaningful way, if it is ranked in an objective way, then it is seen as ordinal data. There's some order to it. When nominal, nominal data can be classified into categories, there's no clear rating or ranking system. Okay, so let's get back to quantitative data. Here we have two measurement scales, namely discrete or continuous data. The definition of these data types can be found in your textbook by the ball on page 99. Um, it's a bit of a technical it's a definition, so we'll just go through it with some examples. Um, so a discrete random variable is a random variable whose possible values either constitute a finite set or else can be listed in an infinite sequence in which there is a first element, a second element, and so on. So what that basically in plain simple terms means that we have something that can be counted. There's only a finite or set number of possibilities, or we can have an infinite number of possibilities but at set intervals. So, for instance, number of students in a class, we can go and count that. That is a discrete variable. Um, the number of slices of cake is a more interesting variable. We can go and count our slices of cake, one, two, three, four, five, or we can have half slices or quarter slices. Let's say, for instance, we would um, like to go and buy pizza, um, and we have a um, pizza place that sells pizzas um, in slices and a pizza can be sliced into eight slices then we can buy an eighth of a pizza two eighths of a pizza three eighths of a pizza so these are fractions we can't buy anything in between those so a um, discrete variable doesn't necessarily have to um, be an integer value we can also have decimal values for discrete variables but the big important thing to remember is that it can only take on certain values, not all possible values in an interval. So that leads us to continuous data. So that by definition here, it says that a, a random variable is continuous if two conditions are met. Now the first one says that it's a set of possible values consisting either of all numbers in a single interval. So let's say we're considering the interval from 0 to 100, then it can take on any value in that interval, doesn't matter what the uh, decimal value is. Or, um, secondly, it can be any number in this uh, a disjoint union of such intervals. So let's say it can take on any value between 0 and 10, or between 20 and 30. Then we consider a variable as a continuous variable. The second definition here, or second part of the definition, says that no possible value of the variable has a positive probability. In other words, the probability of getting a specific value in an interval is zero. Now that just means that if we can take uh, 
any value between let's say 0 and 10 there are so many possible values between 0 and 10 that the chances of us getting one specific value is tiny it's basically zero now examples of continuous variables uh, would be something like height weight time or distance um, these are all things that can be measured we don't count them so that is the easy way of remembering it the street can be counted where continuous can be measured the interesting part of continuous data though is that usually we record continuous data as discrete data simply because our measuring instruments normally can't measure the finer details. So if we look at a ruler, it might be measuring in centimeters or millimeters. When we measure something, it doesn't mean it's exactly 1.5 centimeters. If we had a finer measuring instrument, we could most probably measure it more accurately. So our variable is still continuous, but we normally record it in a discrete manner.